In this example, we are going to use mesh current method to solve a bridge circuit, which is shown here. The steps involved in systematically applying the mesh current method are shown here. Recall that a mesh is a loop that does not contain any other loops within it. For this bridge circuit, we can identify three meshes, which we can label I1 to I3. And also, we can assume any current direction for these meshes. Here, clockwise direction has been assumed. Mesh current method relies on the application of Kirchhoff voltage law, which states that the algebraic sum of voltages around a closed path is zero. In writing the KVL equation, we make use of Ohm's law and passive sign convention. So we use positive sign for voltage drop and negative sign for voltage rise. Let's write the KVL equation for mesh one. In mesh one, we have one, two, three, four circuit elements. We can start writing the equation from any circuit element. Let's start from the 40 volt source. We can see that mesh current I1 is entering the terminal marked minus and leaving the terminal marked plus. Going from minus to plus is a voltage rise. Hence, we write it with a minus sign. Next is the 5 ohm resistor. There will be a voltage drop across the 5 ohm resistor due to the current I1 flowing through it. And we use a positive sign for the voltage drop. Hence, we have plus 5 I1. The next circuit element is the 100 ohm resistor. We can see that both I1 and I2 flow through this resistor and I1 and I2 are in opposite directions. In writing the KVL term, we give precedence to the mesh current I1 because we're applying KVL to mesh one. So this means we get plus 100 I1 minus I2. And last we have the 40 ohm resistor through which again two mesh currents flow and we give precedence to the direction of the mesh current for which we are writing KVL. So this means this is 40 I1 minus I3 is equal to zero. Let's now apply KVL to mesh two. Here we have three resistors. So the first term starting at this 125 ohm resistor will be plus 125 I2. Through this 25 ohm resistor, there are two currents in opposite direction. So we give precedence to I2. So this means plus 25 I2 minus I3. And then through the 100 ohm resistor, two mesh currents. So we get plus 100 I2 minus I1 is equal to zero. Let's continue the process for mesh three. Again, we have three resistors. Let's start with this resistor. So through this resistor, the current is only I3. So we get 37.5 I3. And then through the 40 ohm resistor, there are two currents. And now we give precedence to I3. So we get 40 I3 minus I1. And then plus 25 I3 minus I2 is equal to zero. This completes the process of applying Kirchhoff voltage law and writing the KVL equation for each mesh. <clears throat> We can see that we have three equations and three variables, three unknown variables, I1, I2, I3. These equations can be easily solved. We can use the online resource Wolfram Alpha to solve these three equations. So in the web interface, the three equations can be written uh, as is, and the system can recognize these equations and solve them and the solution is shown here. 
solving these equations we can show that i1 is equal to 1 over 2 which is 0.5 amps i2 is 9 over 40 which is 0.225 amps and i3 is 1 over 4 which is 0.25 amps once the mesh currents are found we can solve for the desired circuit variables in this case we have to find the power dissipated by the voltage source we can see that mesh current i1 is the only current flowing through the voltage source so the power associated with the voltage source is the voltage which is 40 volt times the current which is i1 we use passive sign convention to decide the sign of the power calculation we can see that i1 is entering the terminal marked negative hence we use the power calculation with a negative sign substituting values we can show that this is equal to i1 is 0.5 so this comes out minus 20 watts the final answer is negative and this is signifying that the voltage source is supplying power in this circuit we can use lt spice to verify the solution so this is the bridge circuit constructed in lt spice and if i hover the cursor over the 40 volt source in the bottom left corner we can see that the power dissipation is minus 20 watt so this confirms our solution